learn to improve conversions and generate more leads with the video podcast at marketingoptimization.tv. Hi, and welcome to Marketing Optimization with Alex Designs. I'm your host, Alex Harris, and today we're chatting with Nick Unsworth. How are you doing, Nick? Good. How's it going? We're doing great. We're talking all today about thinking bigger, playing bigger, and living your life on fire. That's what it's all about. I love it, man. What a great, what a great topic. A cool intro, and you know, I mean, I just, I think that I'm just excited for the time I've got here with you today to drill down. And I mean, thinking big is just one thing that uh, that I love to do, love to teach, and it's a game changer. You know, it's like you can totally change your state all the way to your revenue. And I love that it's as simple as choices we make. You know, Absolutely. and choices we make in our heads. So. Yeah, I, I want to start off with that. I want to put people in the mindset of what I'm trying to really you know, accomplish by interviewing you here today is because I met you at New Media Expo when you did your conference with Michael O'Neill. You didn't yep. have a podcast. You were essentially just getting started with your, your brand, really putting everything together. And basically about six, eight months away already, you have products, you have services, you have podcasts, you have videos, and you have systems all to put that in place. Yeah. So I just... I relate to so many people out there or I don't relate to them about why people get analysis paralysis you know you, mm. you hold on to an idea for too long so talk about that talk about connecting with the right people to put the right products in place definitely and I think the um, I've been in that spot where um, I had a business that failed and and um, I then went into heavy debt. You're talking like 50 grand of debt because I kept buying courses. I kept going to masterminds and going to events. And I was in that analysis paralysis where I felt like I was working. And I was doing like 14 hour days. And my, my girlfriend at the time be like, like, what did you accomplish today? And it's like, I was on nine webinars. You know, I listened to like, 13 things and I just had so much stuff I was doing and learning but like not taking any action and so I was like the poster boy for analysis paralysis and the cool thing is that it really starts with the mindset to just to know that we have the full personal power within us to make the choice to just start freaking doing it you know what I mean and 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 that starts with the decision and making a fast one. Like people want to have more time freedom and things like that. We'll make faster decisions. And so you make the decision and where people get the per paralyzed is the fear of failing. It's the fear of doing something, going a direction or starting a podcast and having the embarrassment of it not working or making the wrong decision. So no one wants to actually decide because it's easier and more comfortable to just stay in this abyss of just planning forever. And so what I realized is like, you know what? I hit a point where I had so much debt, I didn't have a choice. I had to just go do something. So it's you make the decision and then you make the decision right. And the cool thing is that, you know, if you make the decision, you know, in my case, I became a Facebook marketing expert. And at the time, I didn't even have a Facebook personal profile. <laughs> like, but I bought courses, I had more experience, and I figured I could coach people that knew less than me. You know, and I went into it and who knows, maybe that would be my passion. Maybe I'd find out I freaking hate it. But until I took action and actually did it, that's when things started breaking loose. So narrowing your niche, making the decision, making it right, and then committing to yourself and just moving forward. And, you know, that, that then leads up into, you know, when I met you, uh, you know, I started Life on Fire and there's a whole, you know, it's a lot of backstory, but, um, you know, with starting this podcast, you know, it's really cool how I started this company because it was speed and it was getting to market. And I feel like we did it in a way that I coach my clients to do, which is instead of taking all this time and building an infrastructure for some dream, it's like, dude, I started with a landing page and launched a six figure product. You know, no website, no brand, nothing, and led with revenue you know, revenue today. So, I mean, I can drill down and dive into like just starting that that way and then, you know, moving into podcasting right around the time when I met you and, and moving fast, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely want to drill down into that to that further. Uh, 
because you know that that mindset it, i think is key for you know basically all entrepreneurs you know going forward having that growth mindset having that abundant mindset that you don't need to sit on your great idea forever if you don't get it out there you're not going to get feedback to really be able to iterate and change things up so l- let's let's break things down and tell people exactly what you're doing you have you know lifeonfire.com which is a podcast it's video and audio and then you're doing coaching and speaking and products and memberships and also your mastermind group as well. So what I want to talk to, uh, initially about is not only that you're trying to help people financially, but you also have a purpose behind it. Almost everything you do is based on helping some type of charity, uh, Pencils and Promises. Uh, yeah. talk, talk about a little bit about that. Yeah, it, it, I'm really glad that you went, you know, went that direction. It's a great question because at the end of the day, um, until you have alignment and purpose in your life and business, things can be really hard. You know what I mean? Like I look at getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's like um, all of my 20s, I spent busting my butt, working insane hours, and yet my mission was to love my job. You know, My mission was to have a good quality of life, and yet I didn't. And why was that? Well, I was chasing the dream. I was, you know, I chased the dream and did network marketing, you know, where it's like you just get three people and they get three and next thing you know, you've got like all this income. Well, that wasn't the reality. You know, I chased the dream and then I had to work my butt off in that industry and I was successful. Then it was like chase the dream to real estate and that was about money as well. And so what's interesting is that the more that we chase money, the harder it is to build a really high quality business that you love every day. And if you wake up in the morning and you don't have like this fire in your belly to just tackle the day and like like this morning I was up at 5:30. You like I never wanted to wake up at 5:30. You couldn't pay me to wake up at 5:30, but I'm literally so excited about the business because yesterday I had an amazing day. You know, I was on the phone with Joe Polish. I had breakthroughs happen for clients. I live for that. You know, and so I I I can't wait to get started. And if you're an entrepreneur and you don't have that feeling, you might be doing the wrong thing. If you work for a company and you hate your boss or you don't like the traffic, you might be doing the wrong thing. So it's like having the awareness about what you're doing and knowing that if you're um, bored or not excited or fired up about it, it's gonna you're going to have a hard time you know, making money with it. So where I start is I start with purpose and I start with alignment and mindset. So you know, in my case, it was... My dream was to sell a business by 30. I did that Facebook marketing stuff. It was a passion because I help people actually make money with their businesses and run ads. But it wasn't like, this is why I'm here on this earth. You know what I mean? It was cool because in any business, if you can make money, you can take money and give it back and then you can have purpose. So that's that's cool. But I wanted something bigger. I wanted something deeper. And so I achieved my goal. I sold the business. And that left me at this point of emptiness where it was like, you know, I broke up with my girlfriend in seven years, moved across the country, um, you know, sold this business, and it was like, wow, that was my dream to sell this business, and for what? Like, yeah, I've got a bunch of money, but it's like I, I could care less. And so then that's when my aha moment happened, and that's when I hired my first business coach, and that was that's when I realized that a, a life on fire, a life that you truly love and you make a big difference is you love what you do for work every single day because we spend more time working than we spend time sleeping, than we spend time having fun or seeing our families. If you have kids, you'll spend, I guarantee you spend more time working than you spend with your kids. And if you don't like what you do for work, that's really sad. That's not you know God's plan. That's not your plan, whatever you believe in. And so starting with that, you know, we drill down and look at what are you good at? What are you passionate about? And how can you help others? Because as soon as you take it from me, 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 me being selfish about money and you move it to how do I help others, that becomes a bigger business. And when you start to, when, you know, our, as entrepreneurs, our paychecks are completely determined by the amount of value that we give for somebody. If I work with, you know, uh, with you today and we build out an online marketing funnel and, you know, you double your income in 60 days because we're just sending tra- traffic, you know, and growing your, your, your list and getting more leads and you make more money. Well, that, that's a game changer. That's value I provide, you know, and if I can then help you, you know, take more vacations and like make those adjustments, well, that, that becomes a very tangible value. And what's that worth? And so, we always need to know what our value is and around something that we're passionate about doing 
And that's how we can charge more money and be able to have a higher quality of life. And so, you know, it's like for my elite clients, they pay 36 grand a year, but they know that they're going to make an extra six figures, you know. And, and so it's like we get clear on that, get clear on your purpose, and think about it every day. You know, every day I wake up and I'm thinking about my big, big picture. You know, I'm thinking about this virtual summit I'm doing that, you know, you know the money goes to charity. And it's like it becomes not about me. It becomes success stories for clients, and that's what I obsess about. You know, I, I don't work on weekends anymore, and it's the weirdest thing because I'm like, I love reading, I love the beach, I love spending time with 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 my lady. But it's like when I'm not doing a, you know, hanging with you here today, or um, you know, when I'm uh, doing a coaching call with a client, and I and I hear them have a breakthrough. Or yesterday, I have a client that never made more than about five hundred fifty thousand dollars in seven years of being in business, and she's breaking eight hundred grand this month. She, or she just broke eight hundred grand. She's never done more than five fifty. She's going to have her first million dollar year ever in her life, and that's you know like that that fires me up. So it's like get that alignment, get that purpose, and drill down. And when people say like they can't figure it out, it's take your best guess and just go do it. And even life on fire, you know, once I had my aha moment, I wanted to love what I do, love what I do. I figured, well, I'm going to help people get this sweet lifestyle. And if I call my business life on fire, I cannot be a workaholic. I can't, I have to live a life on fire. So my brand is so powerful because it makes me actually have to live in it. You know what I mean? Like I have to have a fun life. I have to portray that because that's the brand I'm building. And so that changes how I live, you know, um, my, uh, you know, girlfriend was, you know, she's talking about, um, man, you're so busy. Maybe we shouldn't go and do that thing, you know, on the weekend. And it's like, my head says, you're right. I need to work. And then it says, well, I need to have it all life on fire. So I'll find a way and I'll delegate and make it happen. So it's like, you start with a purpose, get into action. And then, you know, I think one of the biggest takeaways is like leading with profit producing activities. And so when I started this thing, I didn't blow three months building lifeonfire.com. I didn't do my content strategy until six months later. I mean, when you met me, I was six months in the business. A lot of people didn't know Life on Fire, but it didn't matter. We were already three, four hundred grand in, you know, in the bank because I took a lead page, $30 a month, lead pages, edited the copy on it, and that became the backbone of launching our, our first, as a company, our first coaching program, which is how to do Facebook advertising. And we did a six-figure promotion on a freaking lead page. No big infrastructure, no big fancy website, because that's all, you know, take your craft, take your expertise, put it into something simple like a lead page. Or if, you know, you don't have a budget for advertising, go to your warm market. I mean, we got resourceful. We got on the phone with people that I knew from before. I talked to friends. I asked for referrals. It's like get out there and get those clients in the short term because, what I see in coaching is that everyone wants this magical automated funnel that just creates money. But in the beginning, profit producing activities, just get out there and do it and have those conversations. And, you know, I do an exercise where I make our clients journal their day for three days. And I look at it and say, no wonder why you're broke. You're only spending in three days, you've had one conversation with a prospect. Focus on your conversations with prospects, focus on profit producing activities. And then even if you mess up all other areas of your business, you'll still be fine. And so that's what we did. We head down profit producing activities and we focused. It was started with that product. We did six figures with that. Then we sold our coaching program, just one of them, not we have three levels, but we sold one of them. Then we sold, you know, the high level coaching program. Then we came out with Life on Fire TV on YouTube. You know, then we came out with it on the podcast. So it's like focus, focus, focus. And now it's all like come together. So it's just like, you know, keep the focus on the low hanging fruit and launch your simple product or service, your passion, you know, to your network, then start to go bigger. Yeah. Well, you had some some really key points that, that I want to reiterate to uh, some of the people who I know are going to be listening. Because more than likely, you're probably either driving to work or you're sitting in your office, you know, maybe thinking about you know doing freelance or creating a side business. What Nick spoke about right there, it's all about that fulfillment. You can be busy and busy and busy and busy and achieve all this stuff, but until you get that fulfillment, that joy, that pleasure. Yeah. 
And you might not get it from yourself, but more than likely you're going to get it from helping other people. That's why I like coaching so much too. Uh, you know, helping my my, my friends, my clients, uh, or my uh, coworkers, you know, yep. achieve better conversion rates, achieve better marketing success, achieve more money, achieve better happiness in their life. It's those decisions that, that you make giving you the results that you get. So what you have to do is push yourself in those situations, like go to conferences, go to New Mini Expo, go to Podcast Movement, whatever it is, put yourself in the positions where you're around other like-minded people, just like you, you you're, and every yep. at every point of your career, step up a different level like i know that you're a part of exclusive uh, expensive mastermind groups you know mm-hmm. t- talk about that you know really propelling yourself with leverage yeah I, I think that that i love networking i think that um it's the relationships is the shortcut to, to success you know and, and it leads to such just a fun lifestyle and um and so i've, I've got a, a really cool story just about the power of of mastermind and, and so what happened is that when i we flash back and we think you know at the time where i was 50 grand in debt because i bought all the info products in analysis paralysis mode um i was so broke and i um and you know, I, I was in a situation where I, I watched Evan Pagan's sales letter. It was like an hour and 20 minutes. And it was about his guru mastermind and about building an online business, having this lifestyle. But his mastermind event where we'd meet, everyone would pay five grand and you're meeting rock star entrepreneurs and you're getting, you know, top tier coaching in that event. And I wanted it so bad. And at the end of the day, we always can find a way. You know what I mean? And if someone's hungry enough, and sometimes people say, Nick, can I, you know, can I like pay you later for coaching? And and it's like, dude, you got to find a way. I found a way. You find a way. You got to put skin in the game. You got to want it bad enough. And so for me, I had a friend pay 2500 bucks, and we split it. I credit carded literally the last amount of room in my Discover I put out there. I was so broke, I showed up there with protein mix in a sandwich bag. And, you know, we'd go and have lunch and people would go do lunch together, which is a very smart thing in a, you know, networking environment. And I would go take a call and I would be in the sink whipping up protein mix in one of those little cups in a ho- picture, a hotel little cup in the sink and the, and the water's never cold out of the spigot, you know, at, or spout at a, at a, you know, or faucet at the hotel. And it was like with a spoon, I mean, just crazy, nasty, lumpy, warm protein mix where like a little bubble would pop, uh, nasty. And, but I would hurry back and meet people for lunch and I wouldn't eat because I didn't have the money for it, but I would talk and build relationships. And at that mastermind, I made the decision to narrow my niche. Instead of being like this social media person, I became a Facebook marketing expert so I could have expertise in one thing. I then learned valuable skills about marketing. You know, what are my clients' challenges and frustrations and help them with that, solve problems, add value, learned how to network. And the point of the story is that it was that environment around the right people um, at the bar. At the end of the night, there's this guy, white hair, Scott from from Wisconsin. And we just hit it off, became buddies. Uh, We, you know, every quarter there's one of these events. We met up and look forward to seeing each other. And we closed the bar and thank God he always paid for the beers, you know, because, you know, he just sold a business. And that guy became my first five-figure contract. That guy became my first six-figure contract. That guy bought my business. You know what I mean? And it's because I kept adding value for him. And from that conference, I mean, I made hundreds of thousands of dollars in in doing business. Now, I wasn't selling people in the room, but I was adding value. Like, I would reach out. I reached out to Evan Pig and said, hey, man, you're my mentor, but I see how I can add value for you as a Facebook advertising expert. I want to do that. And I did, right? You put, you fast forward, I charge a ton of money for my time in coaching, but I just had a meeting with Brian Tracy, who is a huge figurehead. And because I now understand podcasting and I've only been doing it for four months, but guess what? I'm no John Lee Dumas. I, you know, I, I, you know, um, but at the end of the day, a guy like you or a guy like me, I can reach out to, to Brian Tracy. And even though I'm only four months in the game, I think, imagine this. I can can co- coach and consult his company. Now, I'm not charging a dime, but I'm now the guy that is coaching Brian Tracy. And that brand positioning is epic. And so that's how you create value when you're networking. So being in the environment is one thing, but it's like, how can I add value for someone? And and I look for ways. I get excited. It's like, oh, Brian Tracy, I, I don't care if I'm working five hours a week, 10 hours a week on the, on the guy, you know, on his project. 
I want to add value for him because what a unique situation. And for anyone that has a podcast or is starting one, holy crap, look at your experience. If you, if you have a podcast, you're on episode number three, guess what? You know so much more than other people. And if you just reach out to an influencer and you say, listen, hey, I did this launch. I got to you know number one in my category and how to do this thing. Here's what I can do. I mean, that's how you build your brand as, I mean, now you're, a co- I mean, now you're coaching someone, you know? So the mastermind has been key. Um, I recently invested 25 grand into Joe Polish's Genius Network because for me as a coach, and I have my own masterminds with my own clients, I think about it as when I, by making that decision, I'm elevating my brand fast. And, you know, I want to leapfrog and I want to, to create the, those growth moments as fast as I can. And that 25 grand, that's like, the wedding ring for the, my lady who I want to propose to that, I mean, that's a big deal. But I know that, you know, from that network, I'm going to meet tons of contacts. I'm going to add value for some of those folks. Those relationships will change my life forever. Had a 10-minute call with Joe Polish yesterday, a welcome call. And one idea that he gave me will dramatically change this fundraiser that we're doing. Instead of raising like a hundred grand for this charity, we're literally probably going to be like 500 grand, you know, and it's like, crazy. And so you putting yourself in those right environments, but it's about investing in yourself. And you know, I mean, you and I were talking about this before we went live that you invest in yourself and I invest in myself and there's, it, it's impossible for people to understand unless you do it. But you had a story of you investing in yourself and you're like, dude, you're gonna have like one of your best months. You know what I mean? And like, and, and I'm investing myself and, you know, having some of the best months I've ever had. And it's getting, Instead of taking the long road or the hard road, it's like, you know, when we launched our podcast, I had John Lee Dumas at my side, Michael O'Neill, and we launched it. We hit number one in all the business and all the video, and that's because we just got the mentorship. We invested in it, you know, and and find the money, you know, have the heart, have the commitment, and boom, invest in yourself, especially in a mastermind, and and good things happen fast. Yeah, uh, especially with with life events. I mean, you know, we're right now literally at the middle point of the year. There's only you know, six months left of the rest of the year. So what are you going to do with the rest of your year? Are you going to go to conferences? Yeah. Are you going to go to meetups? Are you going to join a mastermind group and get yourself revolved around, you know, other like-minded people who can really keep you accountable and attain attainable to those goals? Because if you're working at home, you're building your own website, you're, you're creating that perfect ebook and you're doing it all alone in, in a silo, you're yeah. not getting the right feedback and you're not going to grow quick enough because the more you can surround yourself with other like-minded people and get feedback, it's that feedback loop. How quickly can you possibly iterate, get your product to market, get feedback, and then continue to iterate and make it uh, further a lot faster every single time and grow? I love it, man. And and it's like in that situation, it's like you're getting feedback, you're getting things done faster, you're avoiding these huge pitfalls that, that you could make. Mm-hmm. And that, that that network, you add value for them, promote their stuff, they promote your stuff, you know, and when it's a good fit for your audience, and next totally. thing you know, you're growing. It's like guys like you and I, Alex, I mean, it. You know, if we have each other on, on, on shows and cross promote, boom, that's how podcasters, you know, get ahead. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's, it's a shortcut. So that's that's what I love, you know, and it's simple and it's fun. Yes. And, cool. and, and don't be scared to do it. You're going to get a lot of no's. So expect that. Push through those, those no's and that's where you get those breakthroughs. Pu- push through those yeah. plateaus and uh, really don't ever take no for an answer anyway. Uh, so it. so let's, uh, you know, we talked about mindset. We talked about, uh, you know, all the great things you're doing. Let's let's give people some, some practical advice. You are a, a Facebook expert. You have a, yep. a few different products. What would be three top tips for, you know, people who already been on Facebook a little while? Maybe they dabbled sure. with advertising. Um, that type of thing. Yeah. So I, I would say that, um, so number one is, you know, drilling down into, you know, profit producing activities. And I'm going to relate that to getting your funnel out there. So for a lot of people, it doesn't make sense to make this jump to, you know, ads and to, uh, you know, webinars and things like that because you're not tested yet. Right. So for most people, and we do this anytime we launch something that's new, we do this as well. Right. This is just good business. It's you take, what you have and you frame out your offer you don't need to have you know a big fancy website you frame out the offer and you get clear on what the, what what is your outcome so write down 
what is the outcome that I provide? So if I'm going to work with someone for 20 days, what the heck do they get? And that needs to be explained in one sentence. That needs to be explained so that they, they get it, right? So I've got a client who's really good at doing the tech and helping people launch. And, and I was like, and he's like, well, how do I portray that as an outcome? And I'm like, people want to know that they can make more money. People will invest in you if they think that they're going to make a return. So people invest in me for 36 grand because the expectation is they're going to make six figures, like multiple six figures. You know, if they if, if that wasn't clear, then they wouldn't do it, right? And so it has to be tangible. So for him, it came down to 10k in 10 weeks, and he's guaranteeing that he's going to help people make 10 grand in 10 weeks. And you know what? When you set the expectation, and that's what they're going for, and that's what he's going for, and it's guaranteed, hey, if they don't hit the 10 grand in 10 weeks, be a man of integrity and, and keep working until you get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind, that's what you have to do. You know, if I had someone that wasn't happy at my elite level, you bet your, you know, you can bet your butt that I'm going to, I, I will follow, I will do whatever it takes to meet that expectation because that's good business and that's having honor. Um, so it's like, get clear on what your outcome is. Because once you have that, then take that, and the model is that is that is uh, a killer. Is, is you got to get the the customers, you've got to get people in the door, and so you got to prove it out, you know. And so when I did Facebook advertising, I I was all I needed was my first five customers, and I did anything, you know, to get them. And it was like, you know, and and so in this case, I want to explain it this way: is say if you're just getting started with something, define your outcome look at other people in the marketplace, model what they're doing and look at their packages, look at their pricing and, and model, right? Model what you're doing, put your twist to it, make it unique, make it better, make it different, have your tangible outcome and then go out and just say, you know what, I need five. Imagine if if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're like, man, what would I do with an extra 5,000 bucks? Like, holy crap. You know, if Alex and Nick could help me make an extra 5,000 bucks, that's like paying off something, it's like buying something for the, you know, for your significant other, it's, you know, paying a mortgage, you know, and, but if you can take your expertise, model other people and create an outcome, you don't need even need a website. I tell people all the time, get that clear on a piece of paper and your job is to then go out and get five people, you know, five people at a thousand bucks, boom, there's, there's your 5,000. Could you get five people? You know what I mean? Cause sometimes we think about if it's low ticket, like a hundred dollar product, you got to get a ton of people. You know, you always want to be a premium brand. You always want to be the best, and you always want to be higher ticket. High ticket equals high quality. And you know, when you go low, you know, you know, less than a hundred bucks. I mean, you're talking, you're, you're. It's a brutal business because there's, you know, low ticket, low, uh, you know, low ticket, high headache. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a whole different model. So, you know, take your expertise, and you know, can you charge a thousand bucks? And if a thousand bucks is you coaching or teaching them your stuff or doing whatever it is that you do for 30 days and you can get them result great if it's going to take you 90 days to get them the result make it 90 days you know for this guy who's actually coincidentally called Alex he needed 10 weeks to to make them 10 grand perfect that's the program you know and so it's like get clear in the outcome go out get your five but your five are located in your network because for someone to do that, they're going to have to trust you. They're going to need, need to know you. It's dangerous and irresponsible to just think that you're going to run ads to this new product without any success stories or any practice. You know what I mean? Like you don't even know your offer yet. So it's like reach out to your warm market, make the list. You've got people on Facebook. You probably have LinkedIn. You've got past coworkers. You've got people that you know. And you want to get the word out to them. So it's picking up the phone. It's getting on text. And, you know, at that point, you know, it's not like you're just trying to sell everybody. Um, you want to have a value exchange. In some cases, like when I did Facebook marketing, I reached out to everyone I knew and said, I'm a Facebook marketing expert. And do you know anyone that's an entrepreneur? Right. And I could be talking to my aunt Lucy and she could care less about Facebook, not even know what I'm talking about. But if I say, do you know anyone that owns a business or that's an entrepreneur? Now I'm getting a referral. Right. So we have that capability in our warm market. And and so in that situation, how do I, again, it's a value exchange. How do I get someone that 
I just got referred to that doesn't know who I am, how do I get them to want to talk to me? And in that situation, whether it was a referral, whether I was calling, whether I went to a BNI meeting or a Chamber of Commerce meeting or walked into a networking meeting or meetup, um, it was like I'm a you know you you basically have to act the part. You got to believe that you are the expert that you want to believe be. You got to essentially almost pretend that you are and feel it and say, you know, hi, my name is Nick Gunsworth. I'm a Facebook marketing expert that will help you get ideal using Facebook marketing, you know, and, and from there, you got to have a, a way to get them. So from that conversation, can I get them on the phone? Um, if, if I need to do a value exchange, it's like, listen, I did one hour consultations and I would make them a two page social media marketing plan for free just to get them on the phone. But like when I was 50 grand in debt and I needed to cover my bills and I needed to make 3,500 or else that was the first time in my life I was going to not be able to pay my rent and I've never missed a payment in my whole life. But I had to go out, pound the pavement and just get my five. You know what I mean? And so when I take an entrepreneur that's got, you know, that's paralyzed and, and has all these ideas and say, just do, just get your five, get your five Bust your butt for them. That's going to build confidence. You're going to get them results. That starts your business. Once you do that, you get referrals for your next five. You know, once you know your customer inside and out, then you can do a group coaching product. Then you can run ads with great success to it. But it's like, let's be realistic and like, let's just actually get some customers first. Take the customers, use that, get good at it, then move to the next thing. So part of that is. I mean, I, I kind of had a bunch of different things in there, and I think I was supposed to do three, but there's a bunch of stuff in there, but it's like profit-producing activities, know your outcome, get out there and do it. And then the next tip from there is once you're clear on that, then the best converting option after that is once you know your customers is you do webinars. And, you know, but a webinar, that's something where, you know, you position yourself as an expert. You take their problem, their pain point that you figure out because you're interacting with them one-on-one -on -one previously, and you take their biggest challenge and frustration, and that, your webinar is the solution to that. You know, so you got the webinar, and you run Facebook ads, and you take them directly to the webinar, and at the end of it, you know, take them to a free call. Don't just sell. You know, if you've been doing it a while, and you know, like now I can sell at the end of a webinar and boom, there's 50 grand or boom, there's 100 grand. But it's because I know my offer. I know my customer. I know my offer inside and out. And I've coached clients to sell at the end of a webinar. But it always is because if they do it too early, they don't know their offer well enough, then they'll bomb it. So it's like if you need to, you do your webinar and then you bring them to um, the, the best funnels to a survey and then you qualify them. Then you on the phone and do a consult, you add more value. So this is all about adding value, You're adding more value. And then it's like, I could lay out a plan for someone, for Brian Tracy, how to launch a podcast. And then he might look at me and say, can you just do it all? Yeah. Sure. That's 10 grand. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, um, yeah. Cause people but, don't want to do all the work them, the, themselves anyway. Yeah. You know, once they see what really goes into a lot of this stuff, they don't want to do it anyway. They just want to pay you to get, get it done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I would say the, the last piece uh, or just the last, I guess, tip is is really from a brand building perspective because when you can, um, you create so much leverage with the brand. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, and and so like that's one thing that a lot of people think of me as being is is like being good at is mm -hmm. I'm always looking for ways to like stand out. You know, and that's like you know me hiring Gary Vaynerchuk at our event and now, you know, Gary on Gary Vaynerchuk on our podcast and it's like, whoa, like and I ran ads. I spent a ton of money and I put Gary's head in my head and I ran ads. And I'm mooching his authority. Sure. It's putting me at the same playing field as Absolutely. him. You know, and, and so the more that you can, you know, put yourself in a situation where you can do that, where you can and I love like, I mean, look at what you're doing. Look at what po podcasting is great because you're interviewing, you know, people that are very successful, and you're you're elevating your brand fast. So whether it's Facebook ads, whether it's a podcast, I'm doing a virtual tele summit where you know I'm getting 25 big experts and you know putting my head right next to theirs. Right. It could be writing a book. I'm I'm writing. Um, uh, it's called the book on Facebook marketing. Oh, okay. So I can say I wrote the book on Facebook marketing. <laughs> oh, cool. 
Well, I mean, aligning yourself at, as that credible space because, you know, when you walk into a room, you know, as you said, going to a chamber meeting or a meetup conference or uh, or just a, a bigger conference, as soon as people see you and they've maybe seen your videos, you know, especially because, you know, you and I both do video, as soon as they see yeah. your face, they associate you with whatever you've been branding yourself as. You know, yeah. me, the conversion guy, you, uh, the Facebook guy. Um, you know, people know me for, for that right away. It makes such a big difference and really podcasting is the way to do it for sure. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Totally. Well, uh, l let's tell people about uh, the Life on Fire Virtual Summit, how they can find about uh, cool. about that and everything else you're doing. Yeah. So so this is – and what I love is uh, – I'll, I'll quickly go through it, but it's something that anyone can do. Um, and so that what I love about the strategy is that it's um, it's taking other people's expertise and positioning yourself next to them. You know, it's very similar to a podcast. So the thing with podcasting that's interesting is – you build an audience, you get to know people, you build rapport, um, but you have to, it's hard to build a list. You know what I mean? Like you've got to build a huge audience and then it's hard to, to you've got to make offers to get, you know, folks in the podcast to want to interact with you and, uh, you know, to get in your email list, which is cool. That's part, it's our job, you know, and, and that's what we, we have to add value. But with the Telesummit, what's interesting is it's just, done in advance. So uh, think of a Telesummit as, uh, in my case, I'm featuring 25 experts. It's called the Life on Fire Virtual Summit. And so all the sessions are delivered virtually. And so I've got like Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. I got Tony Shea from, you know, the dude that built Zappos and um, uh, Brian Tracy. I mean, you know, just like big names, podcasters, you name it. And so the goal is that for the consumer is you enter your email and you get access to those live sessions. And, you know, I think in the podcast world, they're all, it's all free and there's, that's kind of how people think about it. But in most of the world, people would say, are you kidding me? Like I put in my email address and I'm going to get access to Tony Robbins. I'm going to get access to, to like mega people, you know, that charge a ton of money. And so what's cool is that as we do that, we're going to deliver the sessions live. It's going to be a unique experience. And so for us as a company, our what's in it for us is we're going to build an email list. Um, however, we want to add value for the speakers and get them to want to promote and want to email. And, and imagine how nice it would be, is, is it, Alex, I mean, imagine if all of your guests emailed five times for your, the episode with you, right? It doesn't happen like that. But in a summit, I'm creating an environment where it, it will happen because, you know, for Brian Tracy, you know, why would he want to do the summit, first of all, and because he doesn't like to do interviews? Well, I explained our marketing budget. I explained that, you know, how we're going to benefit charity. And I also explained that he can put his product in our bundle. And so what happens is everyone that opts in for this free virtual summit, they're going to then see an offer. And for 97 bucks, they can um, buy this offer, and it's going to be everything that they need to build a business. You're talking mindset from like Tony Robbins. You're talking Brian Tracy, real tangible products that they people buy, and that are digital downloads and things like that. But it's going to be you know it's very well crafted. Who's putting stuff in there? We have software in there. We have one of our thousand hour courses. So the thing costs, you know, it literally is worth thousands of dollars, and they can get it right there for only 97. And the best part is 100% of that 97 bucks goes to charity. And so the marketers, the Brian Tracy's, the Nick Gunsworth's, right, we're putting our stuff in that bundle. And people, you know, are getting the benefit of, of for 97 bucks, they're getting thousands of dollars of product. And the money goes to charity. And so the cool thing is why Brian Tracy would say yes to that is that bundle, if we have a thousand people that buy it, that's a thousand buyers I'm going to hand to Brian Tracy, right? Imagine that. The buyers, I would take a thousand person buyers list way more than I would take a 20,000 person email list, right? So for Brian Tracy, he's like, what? You know, and when I say Brian Tracy, his team. And so they love the idea of that. And it's like, well, imagine if you promoted it and then I promoted it and we spent money on ads and everyone else in the bundle promoted it, we'd be we build a couple thousand people on this thing, right? And so it's beneficial for them. It's beneficial for the consumer because they're getting a deal that they never could get anywhere else. It's beneficial for, you know, the, the nonprofit that we're donating to because we're going to build schools in Guatemala and help kids. And my little, you know, my thing that, that we benefit is we build an email list. 
and we're going to have big time PR and like branding. But like that environment, all I'm doing is interviewing people, but I'm choosing to do it online in an environment that's going to allow us to build a tangible business. And so with a lot of my clients, what I'm coaching them to do is, is that I podcast for me is, is beyond exciting. I love it. It's one of the most favorite things I do all day. Um, and I love it for clients that have, that want to take their passion and turn it into a business. But doing a virtual summit first allows you to monetize and take the replays on that thing and then put them to your podcast. So sometimes what I see is a lot of podcasters get started, and, but they're creating content, but there's no revenue model unless until six months later, 10 months later. So it's like, be smart about the business, lead with revenue, do the telesummit, you know, get your five clients, do the telesummit. You know, you don't have to do the big charity thing that I'm doing. It could simply be 10 interviews in your niche, health and fitness, dating and relationships, money and business, whatever it may be, get some interviews then from there, you know, that builds your email list. Then you can sell some stuff to them and, you know, and then launch, take those replays and put them on your podcast a month later, you know? Yeah, yeah it's it's really excellent the way, you know, all the people, you know, who are invested or, or potentially are going to speak, they all get together and, you know, uh, promote, you know, whether you have, you know, 10 different speakers, 10 different people all promoting your stuff, you know, that's, that's uh, yeah, it's a great way to build your list real quick. Yeah, yeah. Build the list, builds the business, and you know, and, and this comes back to like purpose. I mean, you know, we don't have to do this thing for charity at the ninety seven dollars, but I'm creating a way that it's a win win win. And I tell you, like, I'm going to Guatemala in three weeks to see the sites we're like building oh, wow. schools and stuff. And um and what's gonna happen is that it's not only that we're gonna like raise a, over a hundred grand and build multiple schools but that that's something that I could I could be on my deathbed one day and be proud of myself. I could be proud of the people that were participated in and, and like that's part of just a bigger, higher um, level of just life. And but the thing is that if I think really big, and this is what we said in the beginning about thinking big, imagine what can happen where that for me and what gives me chill, chills and goosebumps and makes me super excited is that we do this this thing and it becomes inspirational for entrepreneurs to say, you know what, I could build a business that gives back too. And what if that creates, that summit is like, creates a ripple. And, you know, and what if some other entrepreneur, whether I know that it happens or doesn't, builds a school too? You know, just from talking about this, I've got a client that's um, uh, putting up 25 grand to build a school. I can't take credit for like John Lee Dumas, but you know, with talking with him, like he almost came with us to, to Guatemala or you know, booked the trip to come with us to Guatemala. He's plunking down fifty grand to build two schools. Um, certainly can't take all the credit, but I know that you know there may have been some nudges. But like, what if this creates ripples where ten random people build schools or build businesses that give back? And like that level of high thinking and knowing that it's possible, that. Part for me is partly because my mother always said I can do anything I put my mind to. They didn't have a mother like that. It's making the choice today to think big and think that you're here for a total reason. There's are no mistakes. There are no accidents. You are here for a reason. You have a plan. And what's your big think big moment and 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 dream? And there's no reason not to pursue it, you know. And so I think that that's one of these things. I want to be an example that here's a guy that failed at freaking everything I touched. And I am a story of nothing more than persistence and, atti and attitude, you know, just thinking that eventually I will be successful. And it finally happened, you know what I mean? And so I love the idea for someone to just, to, to just have that faith in life, in yourself, that there is a way bigger reason that you're here on this earth, you know what I mean? And, and, that, and go after that. Whatever that thing is, like, man, if I could only do that for work. It's like, then do that. Yeah. Totally. Be bold. Have some guts. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're not only, you know, helping people build their dreams, but you're you're really changing lives. I mean, you know, people that you help, you know, are going to maybe be able to take that vacation or invest in a school. And then, yeah. you know, people like John Lee Dumas, who is a storyteller, he's going to go out and tell a story to everybody. And he's going to say, yeah. hey, Nick Unders is the one who put me in a position to help build a store, uh, a school uh, for uh, kids in need. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, that's it. Thinking big, living, you know, build.
and just it's like it's a choice and that's the best part is that if we're not where we want to be right now it's no one's fault but our own it's based around the thoughts that you think in your head make that choice to start reading empowering books to get a dive into podcasts put yourself in the right environments and just say I'm going to just choose moving forward to not hang out with these people that are bringing me down to you know to not think negative thoughts you know and, and learn personal development and get ahead so just yeah. fun stuff man yeah Bur- burn the boats and head on forward that's yep. it it's all burning that's right Awesome. Let, let's close by telling people what is one thing that people can do in the next 30 seconds, 30 days this year to really live a life on fire. All right. To live a life on fire, the first thing to do, something that you can do today is make the decision and block off time to do something for yourself. And because, you know, reward yourself something that you did this week. Take time, if you don't have the budget to do, it's like get the massage, if you're a woman, get the nails done, do something for yourself because we never reward ourselves as entrepreneurs. And you get in the rhythm of starting to reward yourself for the actions that you do. It's like, I'll bust my butt today and we're gonna go to opening day in Del Mar and do the horse racing and stuff. You know, like, you know, it, like having, choosing to do something to reward yourself and block it in your calendar first because if we don't, plan the vacation first. We don't block off the massage first. The thing never happens. We get busy. So just do something for you today and know that that's the first of many and then make that conscious decision to think bigger. And you know, and maybe you're getting the massage and use that time to really think about your business and work on it and to just go big, burn the boats, yeah, light, this, light the boats on fire and your life on fire. There you go. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Nick. I really appreciate it. This has been great. Likewise. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Alex Designs. Please remember to subscribe to all the videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you.